Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about this uh, equipment set and I'm going to run through this on the mannequin and talk a bit about the mannequin itself uh, and then we're going to contrast the equipment with its British equivalents, 1937 pattern. Uh, this of course is set up to, to represent a Dutch soldier of the 1980s. Um, a little bit, uh, I suppose you could say a little bit of a um, reenactorism or a concession made to show the equipment as one set is it would be unlikely to see someone wearing a full set of the late components as we have them here. That is in terms of the webbing. Um, you'd be more likely to see a mix and match of earlier bits and pieces and later bits and pieces. So this is set up to show all the late bits of this web equipment in one place uh, and that would not be absolutely typical. I'm sure it did happen but it would be more typical to see a mix of different bits and pieces of earlier sets and so forth. So that's just a short, small caveat at the front here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is fully run over the equipment and the uniform and talk about it. A caveat again, some of the designations of this kit I've seen different people uh, give different names. I would be very happy for clarification in the comments. Um, the equipment in particular I've seen different uh, names used but we'll get to each bit of that as we, we run through. Um, starting at the top here we have the, the Dutch M53 helmet which is an M1 clone essentially. Uh, slightly modified but an M1 clone. Uh, camouflage very much as it would have been at the, at the time, with rubber band around here, hessian and net, and we have pieces of elastic here as well which would allow camouflage to be attached. Uh, that's very typical of this time period. And as I say, essentially a clone of the USM1 helmet. You can see that from the shape. The neck here we have a, a scrim scarf worn, and we have the M78 smock, as you can see there. The equipment set itself is where the biggest um, question regarding uh, nomenclature comes in. I've seen it referred to, the, the web equipment referred to as both late M50, M52 or late M53 equipment or M78. Um, now the, uh, my understanding is the late, uh, I think cotton mix or nylon uh, web equipment itself um, is uh, 19, around, introduced around 1978, whereas the rubberized pack uh, and haversack we're going to look at um, are introduced a little bit later in the early 80s. Uh, obviously we also have a haversack round on the side here for the um, C3 respirator and that is worn on its own shoulder straps that was often worn on the belt as well. A particular instance I'm sort of copying here is with it worn on the on its own shoulder strap underneath the web equipment. So the web, equi web equipment could be removed and you would still have the respirator with you. The equipment itself which is the main point of this video, the main thing I'm going to talk about is easily recognisable as being essentially a, a copy, a clone of 1937 pattern. The belt is very clearly so, you have the sliders here. The main addition to the design, the main change to the design is the fact you have eyelets here for the use of M1910 hanger hooks, which some of the uh, the Dutch equipment, the entrenching tool and the canteen, the canteen we'll see as we move around, uh, did use certainly earlier on. Brace, atta uh, brace attachments are essentially identical as are the L straps for the haversack. Uh, we'll move this around now and we'll have a look at the, the left hand side. We'll just have a quick look at the respirator haversack. We'll have a look at the back and then what I'm going to do is contrast these various components with British made, uh, generally wartime equivalents, although some of them are made in the 50s. Um, but this is, as I say, the, the point of this video really is that this equipment set is a last gasp or one of the last gasps and possibly later examples and equipment used later. But in terms of manufacture, this is one of the last gasps for what is essentially 1937 pattern. Um, and as I say, as you'll see, the design is essentially the same. Uh, even the rubberized examples are very, very um, similar to earlier British designs just made of newer materials. So we'll move this round now and have a look at the left hand side. On the left hand side of the mannequin here if we move the sleeve out of the way we can see the haversack for the uh, C3 respirator essentially following Canadian practice uh, slightly modified but essentially the same as Canadian practice in that regard uh, and obviously the design of the respirator differing a little from the, the Canadian C3 in the the XL valve cover and so forth but that's perhaps a topic, topic for another video looking at the uh, the evolution of those respirators. That's the respirator house app. We'll move this around now and have a look at the back. So alongside the antiquated bits of the, the web equipment, which it is, there is no doubt about that, um, you have here the carrier for the entrenching tool. Now this is essentially a copy of the US uh, Linklo and Alice uh, system uh, with a folding three-way fold, three folding entrenching tool inside. Uh, it's exactly the same as US practice in that regard and bang up to date as well for the, the late 1970s. Uh, in its rubberized carrier, as I say, using Alice clips, uh, using slide keepers, Alice clips to attach to the belt. 
The belt itself, as we'll see when we look at this in more detail, is exactly the same at the rear as the 1937 pattern with two buckles to which the braces attach. On the shoulders here, carried on the back rather, uh, is the haversack and this is a modified version of 1937 pattern. The fittings and fixtures are exactly the same. I think the capacity might be slightly different, but it's made of this rubberized material uh, and it is essentially, as I say, other than that, very, very similar to the 1937 pattern. And in that regard, again, a real last gasp for that particular design. The way it's carried and everything, the, the, where the buckles are fitted and the interior, all very similar. The, the internal dividers are slightly different. We'll look at that when we look at it in more, in more detail. Move this round now and have a look at the right-hand side. Looking at the right-hand side of the mannequin here, you can see the canteen. And this is, again, this is an element of the design based on US practice. The canteen carrier is essentially a late war American design, but made in, in this rubberized vinyl material again. Uh, and there is also an even sort of cheaper, cheaper and nastier version of this, but this is the, the one I've decided to put on the mannequin here. Uh, obviously there are elements of the design which are not British inspired, not 1937 pattern. This and the entrenching tool carrier, and obviously the respirator haversack are, are the most um, important elements of that. But I wanted to show a complete set on the mannequin to show how this stuff looked when it was worn before we talk about it in more detail uh, and talk about the different components and compare them to the British counterparts, which is what we're going to do now. Okay, so the first thing we'll contrast from the two equipment sets is the belt. And as you can see, there should be no surprises here, as you'll have seen on the mannequin. It is essentially a 1937 pattern belt. The only real addition uh, to the design, the modification to the design, is the eyelets down the bottom. And this was to allow uh, the earlier type of entrenching tool and water bottle carriers, the, the canteen carriers, to be slung from the belt using M1910 type hanger hooks. As I say, otherwise the buckle design, it's your Mills hook and loop buckle. It adjusts in exactly the same manner. The fittings are essentially exactly the same. Three rivets across the back there for the end pieces and the buckle design essentially exactly the same to the point where you can use this in place of and some some reenactors uh, starting out make the mistake and have I've seen Dutch belts being used in place of uh, the earlier examples with brass fittings being used in place of British 1937 pattern because it is entirely compatible, including the pockets on the back to use the sea hooks. So that's a comparison of the belts there. This example, I've, I said most things are wartime. This is one example which isn't. It's actually a 50s, a 1950s British British belt, but uh, nevertheless, it serves the purpose here of showing uh, the uh, the design and how it is essentially the same. The next thing to talk about here are a key parts of the Dutch system, which are the brace attachments. Uh, and we'll talk about the reason for that a little bit later on. It has to do with, with how ammunition was carried. Uh, whereas in British use, they tended to be used for men who were not armed with, with rifles. They tended to be for uh, use with the pistol equipment and so forth. Uh, they are exactly the same, as you can see, in terms of design. Um, there is no difference here other than materials used in the blackened fittings. They're exactly uh, the same design, exactly the same method of use. Uh, that you loop the belt through and then use this tongue to, to hold it in place uh, in the uh, the keeper there. So as I say, uh, these are essentially 1937 pattern, just made late on by, by the Dutch for use as part of their own equipment set. But that's a quick comparison between the, the brace attachments, just to show you they are exactly the same. And these are British wartime examples in this instance. The next thing to have a look at here are the braces from the two equipment sets. And at the top we have 1937 pattern and lower down, of course, we have the Dutch examples. Uh, and these are essentially identical in terms of design. I've actually picked out British examples that have this, this method simply with a wider section to which the, the one inch section is stitched, which is the same method as is used with, with Dutch manufacture here. Um, this is one of many variations used for 1937 pattern, but this is the standard method used for Dutch manufacture uh, with the, the one inch strap just sewn on. When we look at the L straps, we'll see a, a different method of British manufacture, but I thought I'd pick out a set of, of braces here which showed the same. This obviously made of, you can see there, the shiny end where this has been melted to stop it fraying, um, made man-made materials as opposed to cotton. Um, and then the only other real difference in the design is that the, the loop, which would disappear from British 1937 pattern post-war, uh, the loop where they cross over uh, is sewn to the inside face of the brace on the 1937 pattern, the British, and it's sewn to the outside face on the, the Dutch um, manufacturer here, as you can see, the M78. Uh, and that, um, again, is something that we should see in, in Canadian service as well in the M1951 pattern. They would modify that to sit on the outside of the brace rather than on the inside face, which I think is sensible. There's no point in having an, another 
point of pressure or rubbing uh, against the body when it could just be stitched to the other side. And it's something you'd see, I, I think uh, Indian manufactured 937 pattern of, often has the loop on the outside face of the brace as opposed to the inside face. So just a manufacturing variation there. And that's the way the Dutch did it rather than copying directly the British 1937 pattern. Okay, so here we're going to contrast the L straps and at the top we have 1937 pattern and then close to the camera here we have the uh, Dutch examples. And you can see here the manufacturing variation. We have reduction woven uh, uh, necking down to one inch from two inch uh, strap here on the British uh, L straps. And then here you have again this, the one inch section just stitched onto the wider section here on the Dutch manufacture. You would see this as well in British manufacture. It was just a variation, particularly wartime economy measures. Not everyone could produce reduction woven webbing, uh, and so uh, not all companies could. So the, that was a modification, but the standard method taken up by the Dutch was this example. And as I say, you can find British made L straps with exactly the same um, exactly the same design as this. I just don't happen to have a pair to hand to, to compare. Um, for some reason, all of the ones I have seem to be of reduction woven manufacture. I don't know why that is. Uh, I'll have to keep an eye out for some other ones, um, some, of the, uh, some of the examples like these. But anyway, as you can see, other than that, the design of these is exactly the same. Again, again you can see the melted end here to stop this fraying, um, so it move away from cotton to, to man-made fibres. Uh, but you still have, uh, the obviously, the, the tips on the webbing are exactly the same, both the one inch and the two inch straps exactly the same and the buckles here used to attach the L straps onto the haversack or pack we will have a look at the pack as well much as it wasn't on the mannequin uh, these are exactly the same as for 1937 pattern as you can see they, there is no change in the design there so again exactly the same design and completely compatible so you could carry a, a second world war 1937 pattern haversack on the back using these L straps quite quite possible you could carry a great war dated uh, 1908 pattern pack um, or, or earlier on your back using these L straps. They're entirely compatible with that, uh, those parts of the equipment set. Okay, so this is where the comparison begins to get a little odd. Uh, we have here a 1937 pattern haversack and then the Dutch rubberized haversack. Uh, these are essentially um, very, very similar in terms of design. Certainly the fittings and so forth are. Obviously on the front here, you've had a move away. You have to have these, these uh, ridged straps to make sure that the rubber actually grips in the buckles. And you've moved to one inch straps on the front here as opposed to the, the three quarter inch strap here. Uh, it's simply in Dutch service, so you only have to make one size of buckle. Um, whereas here you've got these smaller buckles and then on the side you've got these one inch buckles. So you, you're having to make different types of buckles uh, in, in the, for the British haversack. And I think that's purely an economy measure on the, the in terms of uh, Dutch manufacture, which makes a lot of sense. If we turn these round on the side, you can see here, there's the buckle at the top to allow this to be carried on the brace ends. And obviously in this instance, it's a solid buckle rather than having the, in the Dutch case, it's a solid uh, one inch buckle as opposed to having the open section here. Um, but that, as I say, is, is a small manufacturing variation. Looking at the rear of the haversacks here, we have uh, the tails at the top, which obviously allow you to, the straps at the top, which allow you to attach the L straps and then a buckle uh, on each side at the bottom. So the method of carrying this on the back is exactly the same the, the buckle onto the L straps in exactly the same manner. Obviously, in terms of the materials, the design is somewhat different and the capacity is somewhat different. The, the Dutch haversack is definitely bigger than the original 1937 pattern design. You also, it's interesting to note just part of the design, you've got these hard plastic reinforcing corners to prevent any damage to what could potentially be a weak spot of the design there, which is interesting. Uh, we'll compare the interior of these now and just have a look at the slight difference there is in the way they're um, segmented inside. So in both instances, we have weather flaps. Um, obviously, these are enlarged compared to the 1937 pattern. If we look inside here, you can see we have the three compartments. See, for mess tins, water bottle originally as originally designed, and then soft kit in the back. So you have the three compartments in there. If we open up the, the Dutch uh, one, the rubberized Dutch haversack cord here, which obviously holds this, that can be used to tie the weather flaps in. And often used, it can just be looped out of the way like that. And then we've got this single divider down the centre line there. You don't have the, the divider here for mess tins on each side. And as you can see there, quite, quite a good volume in there um, for the size. It, it's bigger than it looks, I guess you could say. Um, when initially seen, it, you, it looks very similar in size to a, a 1937 pattern half sack, but actually there is a little bit more carrying capacity in there. But you can see the interior there. So slightly, diff slightly different in that you don't have that extra, extra dividing piece. You do have one along the centre line there.
Okay, so in addition to the haversack, the Dutch equipment also includes a pack, which is very closely based on the 1908 pattern pack uh, from the British system, which obviously was used with 1937 pattern as well. Um, you can see in terms of, of size, they're very close. The I think it's just the way the Dutch pack is folded out here, but it is very similar in size to the, the, the 1937 or 08 pattern. It was recoded as 1937 pattern post Second World War, so I refer to it as 1937 pattern in this context. Uh, similar design to the haversack, you've got the, the plastic corners here, uh, obviously the strap system and everything are very, very similar. If we turn this round, we can compare it to the pack. In contrast to the British pack, we have buckles at the top on the side. As you can see, we don't have that on the, the British pack here. But you do on the Dutch rubberized example, again, to be carried on the brace ends, I'm presuming. Um, obviously, uh, something that's, that's not pre present on the British design, but was introduced on the, the Dutch design. If we look round at the back here, <clears throat> turn these around and look at the back. You can see a very similar setup in terms of the, again, you have the straps at the top here, and these ones actually include buckles on them uh, for use with the L straps. A, a, a contrast here is the set, the position the buckles are set in uh, on the back of the, the, the Dutch pack, but they are, I believe, intended for the same purpose in using supporting straps, which we'll look at shortly. Uh, and the other thing as well is if we look at the bottom here, the loops of the supporting straps are, are uh, angled in the opposite direction. Now, I've not quite worked out this uh, worked this out in terms of how you're supposed to use this for supporting straps. So another point in this video is uh, I'm hoping some who've advised me on Dutch kit before will be watching and can advise exactly how the supporting straps work with the pack in this instance. Earlier Dutch packs, which I have an example of, um, have them set, have these loops set. The webbing Dutch packs have them set in the same angle as this. So you can use the supporting straps in the same manner. It's extremely awkward to try and do it with the, obviously these two correspond here and they're at opposite angles, which makes it very awkward. Uh, I don't fully know the reason for that. So if anyone does know, I'd be very interested to know. And if I'm missing a trick in terms of using the, the straps, obviously which cross over at the front and allow you to provide a buckle here for the, the L strap to buckle onto. Um, but as I say, other than that, we won't have a look at the inside of this. They're both just big open compartments. Um, there's nothing really to see there. Uh, they're very, very similar in that regard. But this is essentially a rubberized version of this. Um, obviously, with the design modifications in, in corners, reinforced corners and so forth in, in light of that. Uh, but the position of the buckles and the, the loops for the supporting straps is a slightly odd one. So any advice on that would be very much appreciated. And as we've just been talking about them, the final thing to contrast here are the supporting straps. And we obviously have British 1937 pattern at the top here. And then we have Dutch here um, near the camera. And again, the only difference really uh, in terms of uh, looking at these compared is the more modern materials and the blackened fittings of the Dutch examples here. And the fact they're made in, obviously in green. These would originally have been khaki, but they've been blanco green. Uh, the Dutch are obviously made green from the start. Uh, and again, you've got the return here to the open uh, one inch buckle as this, exactly the same as British use, uh, in, as opposed to the closed aluminium buckles we've just seen on the pack and have a sack. So again, the, these being slightly earlier, still using that open type of buckle and entirely compatible with 1937 pattern British components. So you could use these with a 1937 pattern pack or, or as formerly known 1908 pack. You could, you could use these no problem. And conversely, you could use these with the Dutch pack, no problem at all. So entirely compatible there. And that's the last bit of webbing to compare in detail. There we are, that's a look at the Dutch M78 equipment and its last guys, uh, as I say, the last gasp for the 1937 pattern in many ways, uh, or certainly one of them, uh, an interesting one to look at from that point of view, that it, late, very late into the Cold War, you have a country still producing um, 1937 pattern, essentially, uh, to a slightly modified, their own slightly modified design. And of course, the reason for this is back compatibility. And as already mentioned, having this set like this uh, is slightly um, slightly odd. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily have all the new components. You could have one old L-strap, one new L-strap. You could have an older type of belt, obviously earlier than this, they were made in cotton with um, slightly different uh, brass fittings and so forth. Um, still with the eyelets, but you, you know, obviously with this, unless you wanted to hang stuff from the belt, you could use a 1937 pattern belt in place. And of course the Dutch bought huge amounts of non uh, of surplus, non-issued 1937 pattern after the war. Uh, which is why they and many other countries then developed it further. And in particular, in this instance, we have all the new components back compatible with earlier components. And that's why this design lasted so long in many ways, is so that the, the stuff they had in stock was still viable and usable. OK, new production is going to be made to this, this specification, but it's back compatible with the old stuff and any old stuff we're having can still be issued out. 
One final thing to mention with this, much as this the main point of this video is to look at it in contrast to 1937 pattern, an interesting point with the Dutch equipment at this point is the fact they're using brace attachments. We've not compared ammunition pouches, we've not compared basic pouches to anything used with this. We've looked at brace attachments and the reason for that is at this time period uh, the Dutch were not issuing out many spare magazines to their soldiers. I believe one in the pocket and one on the weapon uh, was the idea. Uh, because, the, well, the, the, apoph the apocryphal story at least is that the, the Dutch army, being very pragmatic, realised that a full-on Soviet assault, the Dutch army wasn't going to last very long, one magazine reload would be enough and you'd be able to take ammunition off your dead soldiers. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but that's certainly what's been peddled and I've seen around a lot, uh, is the idea of, of why you wouldn't have much ammunition. Uh, so you, you obviously are basically using the belt and the um, braces and the brace attachments as a carry a, a stabilizing uh, system for the haversack on the back and to allow equipment such as the canteen and the entrenching tool to be carried on the belt um, you say it's not being used to carry ammunition it's being used essentially to carry other bits and pieces um, so interesting from that point of view as well is the the uh, the web equipment in, in Dutch use at this time has fallen out of favor as a way of carrying ammunition due to a, a lack of need but that's everything I wanted to cover in this video, I think, including some of the, the sort of extra little points at the end there. Uh, if you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, uh, then please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done already. Uh, and whether you're newly subscribing or you've already subscribed, do make sure you hit the little notification button next to the subscribe button as well, the little bell, which will alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my videos and you'd like to support the channel, you can do. Uh, there's both a Patreon and a PayPal link down below. And a massive thank you to everyone who supports the channel using those two methods. It's really greatly appreciated and, and thank you very much for that. Uh, there is, of course, also social media for the channel. There's Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, all linked down below in the description. Uh, you can follow the channel on any one of those. And if you want to make contact with me, but you don't really use social media, there is also a, an email address as well down below, which I, I check regularly. Uh, a good way of getting in contact with me as well. Uh, but that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. So until next time, bye for now.